This is Jim Zagzewski from ClearCube, and the topics we're going to cover today are the reasons for an increase in Blade PC and PC over IP workstation deployments. What I'd like to do is explain some of the growth factors that are driving changes in the marketplace for Blade PCs and that are uh, opening up new market areas. Some of the factors include some technical improvements that have happened, some agency mandates and initiatives that have happened, and an understanding of where Blades best fit in bringing value to the organization. When you start taking a look at the overall Blade PC marketplace, you may be surprised to know that there are really tens of thousands of Blade PCs that are now being used to replace traditional under-the-desk PCs. A lot of what is driving that are security initiatives, and security mandates that are being uh, imposed by agencies across the U.S. government. Other things that have changed the landscape are that Blade PCs now support the full graphics capability that are supported by the 30-inch displays with the, uh, the high-resolution outputs. And economies of scale volumes have yielded some huge cost per seat decreases that help us with the adoption of Blade PCs in uh, government locations. So let's define what a Blade PC is. Really what there are is two main components. You've got a rack mount computer, which consists of CPU, memory, drive, network connections, graphics, and the PC over IP adapter, and that's located in the data center. And then you have a zero client at the desktop that has no OS, no memory, and no storage. Where does that have great impact? It has great impact in the security profiles. Reducing security risks are a large part of why Blade PCs are being adopted at a much faster rate. So let's examine the motivations that drive people to adopt Blade PCs in place of distributed PCs in their networks. Traditional PCs are pretty highly prone to security breaches. We all know the stories, the WikiLeaks, the laptop incidents at certain high-profile locations where data has disappeared. And you know that data is everywhere on a distributed LAN. With a Blade PC and data located in the secure data center, those problems go away. We end up using zero clients at the endpoints that have no operating system and no local storage and no memory. And therefore, the only thing that goes across to that endpoint using PC over IP protocol are pixel changes to the displays. So enterprises are buying Blade PCs to reduce their security risks. Another motivation, especially in the government sector, is in the area where there are multiple desktops where network access has to be separated due to the classified and unclassified nature of the data that they are accessing. So when you look at what a Blade PC does to the ergonomic footprint, it really, really helps it. The desire to improve ergonomics in the work area cover a number of different use cases. The users themselves, in some cases, demand to have less clutter, less complexity in the way they go about doing their jobs. And in a multiple network environment, you can imagine just how cluttered it can get. We have a number of customers who have replaced as many as 16 PCs under their desks, each connected to different separated network environments. And so when you remove all of that and put it back in the data center with a Blade PC, you solve a number of problems. One is that you end up going back to the security profile, making it a much better environment. And the second part of it is that by moving the clutter and the processing away from the desktop, you end up reducing the amount of heat that is generated in the work area. So enterprises also buy Blade PCs to make their work areas quieter, less crowded, and more worker friendly. Sometimes we hear the idea of, come to my cubicle to view my document. Well, with a Blade PC, that problem gets solved because with zero clients, you can broker a connection and connect in view from any endpoint location on the network, provided, of course, that you're authorized. Where these moves, ads, and changes come into play is in the collaborative nature of work you're able to go to any location on the network and access your particular blade through the brokering technology. Now, with ClearCube, we actually have our own broker, and you may have heard the term broker used in the VMware context. They also have a broker. VMware has a broker called VMware View Horizon. When you think about what a broker does, 
what it's doing is it's negotiating a session, basically a handshake, to a host location. The neat thing about brokering is that any of the endpoints that you are trying to establish the connection from can be routed over the network to the desired host source. So when you start talking about Blade PCs, you're not tied directly to the cubicle as you would be if you had a PC under your desk. So enterprises buy Blade PCs to move collaborative workers without having to move the equipment. The economic benefit of this, by the way, in the financial trading community is huge. Moves, adds, and changes in the financial community is a fact of life. So traders are encouraged to work together and collaborate. And in the normal environment in a distributed PC network, the network administrators actually have to pick up equipment physically and move it from place to place. With Blade PCs and Zero Clients, that environment gets greatly improved. Of course, there are green initiatives that are starting to drive a lot of decision making and how networks are implemented. And reduced power consumption is, is one part of this equation. Centralization initiatives for power reduction at the desktop are pretty much everywhere. And in many cases now you see checkboxes on questions related to how much power consumption are you using. When you think about it, what a distributed PC is, it's a pretty hostile piece of equipment. Putting it in the work area consumes an inordinate amount of power because they exist in work areas that are built for human habitation. PCs at the desktop need extra airflow because they run hot and they consume more power because of the HVAC inefficiencies. Power consumption, which was once a hidden cost, has become very visible in IT mandates to reduce the OPEX costs. So when you put a Blade PC in a climate-controlled data center, the power consumption can be reduced, and the data center cooling is ultra-efficient. Zero clients at the desktop only take 6 watts, which is extremely low. So that helps reduce the HVAC requirement in each one of the areas where the workers are. So to reduce their power bills and their carbon footprints, people buy Blade PCs. Another factor is longer refresh cycles. We're, we're seeing more and more of the desire for longer technology life cycles. Distributed PCs have a relatively short lifespan. And you know we know from experience that due to improper cooling, you know, improper ventilation, their tendency to fail is much higher. Blade PCs existing in the data centers have much longer lifespan. And the other part of this, of course, is the zero client. A zero client has very few components. It's essentially a solid state device. And right now, when we do TCO calculations and we start taking a look at power consumption and average life, it's not uncommon for our customers and our partners to factor in a seven-year lifespan at the desktop. So enterprises are now buying Blade PCs to extend the useful life of the technology and spread out the refresh cycles and obviously save money. So let's talk about TCO a little bit because that's a, an acronym that's on everybody's mind. When you think about TCO, total cost of ownership is all relative. It's all based on what you're dealing with to begin with. Probably the worst profile from a TCO aspect is what exists primarily in the marketplace today which is the distributed PC network. It's really the baseline for the worst way you could possibly do it. High maintenance costs, high failure rates, high power consumption, goes on and on and on. So if you start from that perspective and you back figure some of the improvements that you can immediately see that are intuitive, on almost every level you'll see TCO improvements. Another motivation, especially in the government sector, which is very difficult to calculate from a TCO perspective, but actually has the highest factor in why people are using Blade PCs, is the cost of a security breach. Hard to calculate, but obviously there are real losses. A security breach, beyond the fact that you're losing valuable information, you're also losing reputation and you're losing trust or customer sensitive data such as social security numbers and those type of things. Losing that type of information is incalculable in terms of trying to put a dollar figure on it. You can go to the WikiLeaks area and obviously that's a very visible one, but there have been numerous places where laptops have disappeared and data with them. All of that worry, anxiety goes away in a Blade PC environment. 
There's also another kind of interesting uh, thing that we have observed, and that's office psychology. With a Blade PC and zero clients, what happens in the office environment is you see a phenomenon called PC envy. A new or more powerful PC shows up in a worker's area, and sometimes that implies a raise in their status or a negative reflection on the poor guy who didn't get the same equipment in his office. What we've seen, believe it or not, from an office psychology perspective is that one upsmanship goes away because on the desktop, everybody has the same device. It's a zero client. So Blade PCs really eliminate that PC envy. All users have the same indistinguishable zero client, and the workforce is oblivious as to what that zero client is connecting to. It could be to a super powerful Xeon computer with a K5000 GPU card, or it could be to a virtual machine. To the user, he doesn't know, and to his office mate, he doesn't know. So enterprises buy Blade PCs because they actually provide a level of office politics reduce, let's put it this way, the office politics part of the equation in desktop adoption. Now we'll talk about Blade PCs and the relationship in the VDI space. So let's start with the first one, the alternative to VDI. VDI typically requires a pretty large user population to justify the costs involved. So 150 plus seat VDI project is a good starting point for most companies, most agencies. When you start getting into the VDI environment, you know that you're going to be buying into a considerable more amount of complexity simply because you're going through learning curves and you're going through a different type of help desk need and you have to have a different talent pool as far as your IT people. Are they trained on all of the different types of consequences in a VDI project? The next issue that comes up is that not all applications virtualize well. There are certain technical aspects, especially with applications that are homegrown or applications that are vital to the operation of the company. VDI sometimes, uh, from an application sense, cannot be adopted wholeheartedly. And the third part of it is also you start taking a look at the VDI economics and the model of what VDI involves. And it's a different type of model. With distributed PCs and networking, and with Blade PCs for that matter, because it's more or less a completion of project from a budgetary sense, money is allocated and funded and the project gets completed. With a VDI model, you have to rethink it a little bit from a budgetary sense because the subscription model gets introduced into the equation where every year you have to think about it in terms of license renewals and subscription renewals. So where Blade PCs come into, uh, uh, have great fits or for smaller user communities or where VDI user experiences weren't positive the first time they tried it or where applications become problematic. There's also another kind of half step I want to talk about. We have a lot of folks that are very, very interested in going down the VDI path, but from a sense of urgency due to the calendar, they don't have the wherewithal to adopt a full VDI platform, but they have pain points that they want to address. Obviously, security we've talked about is one of them. So to ease pressure on their transition to VDI, they look to Blade PCs as sort of a halfway there. They get an urgency from the multiple fronts on the security issues issues or there are agency dictates to start taking a look at VDI, but the clock and the calendar become the enemies. So Blade PCs offer a way to address multiple IT issues in a timely manner. You basically have a zero client common user device used for both the Blade PC and for the eventual VDI environment that you're going to adapt. That gives the user community the idea of what that small footprint is going to mean to them. They reduce some of those urgent pressures and they move in a direction that centralizes the PC element, gets them out of that security risk and puts the processing power back in the data center, which is exactly where a virtual machine exists. So it's not fully virtualized, but you're on your way. And then the third one, Blade PCs in many ways are VDI compatible. They complement VDI because applications that can number into the thousands, and we have customers that have thousands of applications where they can't come up with a one-size-fits-all VDI approach to satisfy everybody. They start looking at Blade PCs to fill the gaps. 
They'll allow administrators to solve the problems of centralizing their IT resources, and they'll be able to deliver complete application compatibility because, frankly, a Blade PC is a PC. When you look at the components that comprise a Blade PC, it's from an adoption perspective and from a network support perspective and from an application perspective completely compatible with what they're used to. So transitioning over to a Blade PC and inserting it into a VDI environment is a good way to ensure that all use cases are met. In ClearCube's case, we have a VDI product called Smart VDI, and we have an architecture that we talk about that we call CVDI environment, which is a centralized and virtualized desktop environment. Using VMware View as a broker, you can, from the same desktop, pick your destination. So from a common user interface and from a common device, you can actually pick your route to the resource required to do the job. So if you've got a heavy graphics environment, or if you've got a particular type of application, let's say it's Linux-based, let's say it's got uh, a profile that was developed in C years and years ago, and you don't have a way to virtualize that application, you can run that on a blade, and you can broker the connection to it in one session, and then you can change your route and go back into your virtual world, to your virtual machine, and run your normal work applications, like email and, and the normal business application. That's the flexibility that this type of architecture will bring. So those are a number of the reasons why people start to adopt the technology, but there's also been some technical things that have happened, technology improvements that have happened recently that have really expanded the market for Blade PCs. In the performance area, on the Blade side, ClearCube's Blade technology is state-of-the-art. So we're running all of the same processors you would normally adopt by using distributed PCs, SATA drives, hybrid drives, SSD drives. But probably the most important thing within the equation is the introduction of the Terra 2 PC over IP capabilities. And that was that's just been recent. So within the last, say, four to five months, market adoption has greatly improved in companies that are looking for high-performance profiles, where before they have been left out of the equation in the centralization initiatives, simply because they needed the GPU local to them to be able to handle the amount of traffic and, and processing capabilities for the type of applications they were running. That's no longer true. Blade PCs now running the Terra 2 products are capable of delivering the full desktop experience. And by that I mean from the graphics perspective in the GPU lines, you can connect to as high as an NVIDIA Quadro 6000 on the top end of the line, all the way on down the NVIDIA line for GPU performance. On the technology side, other things have happened. We've got packaging improvements. So we've got some very high profile, um, from a rack perspective, we've got high density combinations where we can put as many as eight blades and three U of rack space, which is a very small amount of rack space consumption. On the desktop, zero clients have had size reductions just recently because of the Terra 2 technology of as much as 40%. So now you're looking at a zero client that's about the size of a market fresh RB sandwich. I mean, it's it's not large at all. And in ClearCube's case, we have a spec special packaging design for people looking for multiple level network uh, solutions called ClientCube. In ClientCube, we package up to four zero clients plus a secure KVM or KM switch. And we reduce the entire footprint down to six inches by 14 inches by 10. That, folks, is less than the size of a PC tower, and yet it gives the capabilities of actually having or replacing four dedicated PCs under your desk. So enterprises are now buying Blade PCs to optimize that desktop space utilization and, and, and save uh, workspace. Other configuration improvements I sort of alluded to. The Terra 2 chips now have doubled the bandwidth support at the desktop. So you're now capable of being able to support dual 2560 by 1600 displays. These are your 30-inch displays. The frame rates on a one-to-one -one Blade PC are 60 per second, which are about three times faster you, than you can get on a virtual machine. So that is really a great use case for when you start taking a look at mapping Google Earth applications 
or anything that requires a large display output within the ClearCube family are capable of supporting the entire range of the NVIDIA GPU family. So if you've got, you know, consumptive graphics applications or if you've got requirements for generating graphics rendering, we have you covered with our uh, configuration flexibility. Within the ClearCube family, we also have an advantage, and that is our management capabilities. We have a software package that addresses, on the Blade PC side, the zero client brokering capabilities. So why that becomes important is that if you're looking at VMware View down the line, but you're not ready to make that commitment into the desk. You may have it on your virtualized server side, but you're not ready quite yet to move to the desktop side. Our zero clients can broker the connection to the Blade PCs without using Vue. However, we also use Vue. So that is a kind of a best of both worlds kind of approach. As far as other capabilities within our management package, we've got a failover routing capability. So you can put up a spare blade, and in the event of a failure, Within the pool, a reconnection will connect you to a, to a secondary blade. So if you've got a high availability profile environment where you need, you know, extremely mission critical type of support, you're never going to get that on a distributed PC. Trying to, trying to replace a failure at the desktop takes time and it takes effort, it takes manpower, and it has risk associated with it on whoever you're trying to help. To be able to do it automatically in the data center is a real, real important functionality, especially if you're in an E91, E911 environment or any kind of command and control environment where you cannot be down. That capability exists within the ClearCube family. There are thousands of cases across the government sector where Blade PCs are solving problems. Going down that route, you're in good company. You can see from the profiles on our screens of the type of adoptions in the high-profile environments from uh, the most demanding from a security sense all the way down to training centers and those that have to deliver applications like Falcon View, ArcGIS, and a number of those type of areas where the idea of being able to put a secure desktop device out there and not have to worry about uh, any kind of security breach is the driving mode. Command and control is obviously our sweet spot, but we're seeing a wider and wider adoption of Blade PCs across those use cases that we talked about before. And probably the last thing why people are adopting Blade PC environments is that it's a proven technology. 